Okay. So the access method in in eight hundred two point eleven is um, called DCF, and the word DCF is not here, but I think it's on the pre next one. Um, and um, so basically, what they do is they have three different inter interframe spacing between the frames. How long they have to be uh, empty? Shortest interframe spacing SIFs. Then the medium one is called PIFs, and then the long one is called DIFs. Distributed point coordination function and the shortest function. SIFs is used when you want to send something very critical, and most critical things are. Anybody remembers now from last time? What are the three most critical things you have to send in SIFs? Huh? Yeah. Right. So basically, request to send RTS, CTS, and X. Right. Good. All right. So those are sent at SIFs, and then PIFs is for um, you know any real time stuff. There is a time criticality, and you generally reserve in advance, and so you are given a time, and and that is the time which is during which you reserve. And then diffs is everybody else, and they, everybody else has to follow this random back off thing, which we'll discuss a little bit more in a detail. So PCF part is already talked about. This is the reserve period, but after the reserve period is over, then the contention period starts, and this is called DCF, distributed coordination function. And um, in distributed coordination function, you have to see if the medium is empty. If it is empty, then you start. If it is busy, then you you know you don't start at all. And if you collide, if it is empty and you collide, then you draw a random number, right? So coordinate sends a beacon. So the beacon is sent at this point, and everybody knows what. In the beacon, actually, it will say what is the time duration for this. And actually, there is there a lot of stuff in beacon. But one of the things would be how much is the contention free period. So these guys will not try during that period at all. When this is over, then they will um, basically sense the medium. So beacon frame, and um, and and actually among the period here, there is a, in the in the contention free period, there is a small period during which you can say I want PCF access. And um, that is a polling period, basically. So you tell I need, and then next time probably you'll get it. You probably will not get it in the same period, but in the next cycle you will get it. So the contention-free period will be, if, if this is too much, then it might be less and less and less. And this whole cycle is fixed. Super frame is fixed, and that is also announced in the beacon. All right, so DCF back off. <coughs> now here's the back off algorithm, which is similar to what is in the Ethernet. And you keep three variables. Actually, we discussed this slide. I remember from the last time. So we have three variables: nav. Nav is a timer that you set to the whatever is time in the frame. Each frame in the header has a time. It says this is how long you should be quiet. I mean, other people should be quiet. And um, and that time includes not only the frame but also the Acknowledgement and the in between shifts or whatever you need, right? So if I am sending an RTS, the time in RTS would be not just the time for RTS, but the time for RTS, the gap, CTS, the gap, the frame, the gap, and acknowledgement. Whole time will be an RTS. So if you hear an RTS, then you have to just not do anything for that much time. So that is what what goes into nav. Okay, yeah. This much is the gap. This is what? The gap that is required. Sifs. Okay. Yeah, gap is sifs. Okay. So every frame has a time which indicates when that activity will end, not just the frame will end, right? So if it is RTS, the activity will continue to the act. If it is a CTS, the activity will continue to the act, and the frame activity will continue to the act. And the act is will end in act, right? So you understand this the total time. So that is nav function. Okay. Now these two are used. The back off count and the window are used only if you run into a collision. That you send an RTS and you did not get the CTF. 
right? If the so so the, the, I'm going to describe that in the next slide. But the key thing here is okay. So I mean, the thing is, you draw a random number back off between zero and C W congestion window. So you start with one, then you go to three, then you go to you know seven and so on and so forth. You just double the window every time. So zero to one, you draw a random number and you wait that much time and then you sense the medium at that time. Sense the medium at that time. Okay. If the medium becomes busy during backup, the timer is stopped and a new nav is set. After the nav expires, then you back off, your backup continues. So here's another little rule and this is important to understand. So let's say you, 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 you drew random number one, zero and 1023. All right. And you got the number five, 500. Okay. So now you're not going to do anything until 500. But while you are waiting, you hear a frame, somebody sends an RTS and they send a CTS and they say, okay, the system will be busy for next, you know, five seconds. So for that five second, your back off is stopped. I mean, it's actually paused. So you will continue your back off after that five second is over. So your total back off is five seconds plus whatever happened in between. Is that clear to everybody? So your back off timer continues. If you're in the back, back off and somebody else comes on, then you start your back off timer and follow them. Right? Once they are done, then your back off starts again. You don't have to redraw another number after they are done. Right? Your previous number is still active. All right. So initially, and after each successful transmission, CW is equal to CW min. So in the beginning, it is CW min. So I said 0 and 1, but most likely the CW min could be 3. Now this is an example. You could set it to 1. You could set it to 5, I mean 7, whatever, right? So CW min, if it is 3, then it will start from, from um, 0 to 3. Okay? Random number. And CW max is... Um, is when you stop. So if you reach 127, which is actually um, not 1000 that we were talking about, it's just 127. If you reach 127, then you don't go up. So this is like truncated back off. Anybody remembers truncated back off anywhere else? Anybody remembers back off anywhere else in the wired networks? Eh? Ethernet. Ethernet has a truncated back off and it truncates at what value? <laughs> you guys forget very fast. 10. 2 raised to 10 is the maximum you will back off. Okay. 10.24. After that, you don't, if, if you, after 10th attempt, you just give up. You say, I, and this network is not usable. I mean, then, you know, packet is last or, you know, you just start, you know, new packet or something. Okay. So here it is 127, CW max and CW min, right? And um, so you will, your congestion window will never be more than CW max. You see, after every time you double it, so you start with, let's say, 3. Next time it will be 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 1, 7. Right, congestion window could be 7, and then 7 plus 2 times 1 is 15. You know, it's basically 2 raised to n minus 1. Okay, all the way up to CW max, which is 127. Now, in this example though, right, this is not the standard. The standard doesn't say that you cannot go over 127. But in this example, this network manager, person who is actually running the network, decided that we will have 3 and 127. So these are not standard values. Standard allows you any values, but you know this is the this is the parameter. Typical parameter values for and different files could use different values. So for um, for this um, uh, DS file, typical slot time is 20 microseconds. So US is micro, new, and SIS is 10 microsecond, 
and min is 30 and max is 1023. For frequency hopping, it is 10, 50 microseconds and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, these were the original, um, original files, right, in 11. But then 11a changed it to 9 microseconds and so on, and 11b changed it to that, 11g changed it to that. Now, I wouldn't remember these values myself, so I wouldn't expect you to remember, but I just wanted to know, be able to know that there is a variation. Okay. Different files, different networks, different things will have a different recommended values. And these are again typical values. These are not the values that are manda mandated. But these are not required values. These are just recommended value. And um, and people would use anything different depending upon how they feel their network goes but works but, better or not. TIFFs is generally sys plus one slot time. So they just leave one slot time and this is two slot time. And the slot times are given here. The slot time is 20 microsecond and what, 9 microsecond and so on and so forth. Okay. So these are typical values. Now, so this is called virtual carrier sense. You see, the carrier sense is that when you go to the wire and you check every second, right? But here is virtual because we really don't go to the wire. We have this nav set, timer set. And then the timer expires, then only we go and see the wire. And actually wireless in this case. You see the medium only after the nav expires. So nav actually makes it virtual. So I'm going to say it again one more time that each frame has a duration ID, which indicates how long the medium will be busy. So RTS has the duration of RTS, safe, CTS, safe frame, safe and act. And CTS has the duration of this and so on and so forth. And all stations keep the nav and the station do not sense the channel until the nav becomes zero. And therefore, this is a virtual carrier sense, right? If you were sensing it, why don't you sense it all the time? Can anybody think of a reason why one would not sense it all the time? Yeah, you could go to sleep for that when they do. So basically, energy, the battery is the reason, is that basically now you know that this other guy is going to give his 10 hour lecture. So why, what I'm going to do for 10 hours, I'm going to sleep, right? That's what it is, <laughs> is that everybody else goes to sleep. Only the sender and the receiver have to be active. Good. All right, so here is an example, and listen carefully. I don't know when the exam is. When is the exam? Huh? 22nd? Yeah, okay. All right, so this will be in the exam. I'm telling you right now. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> so, um, here's an exam. So, basically, here's the example. Slot time is 1. CW min is 5. This is 3. Fifth is two and fifth is one. This is just an example, right? And of course, in the exam, I will change the numbers and you have to work it out. So at t equal to one, here's the time. At t equal to one, station two wants to transmit. But the media is busy because the access point is sending out something. Right? So, the station at time 2, station 3 wants to transmit and 4 wants to transmit. All right, none of them can do anything because the media is busy. And after the media is done, at t equal to 3, station 1 finishes transmission. So, actually, um, if AP is the same as station 1, it finishes transmission at, at 3. And, um, and it was transmitting to station 4. Sorry. Station, station 1 finishes transmission. Station 1 receives the ACK for its transmission. And so basically, it waits for one unit of time and then it receives the acknowledgement. So at five, it finishes, basically finish, the nav will expire for most of these guys. If they were ever alive before, they will know that this is going to expire at five. 
right? And um, so at five, the act is over. Now they have to they have to wait for diffs and sense the medium. So they wait for three. This is three. They wait for three. At eight, they all sense the medium. They send an RTS. At t is equal to eight, the diffs expire. Station two and three send an RTS, and then they, basically they will collide. They draw an RTS. They draw a random number between zero and five. Why between zero and five? Because TW min is five. Right, and let's say this is an example. The counts are three, one, and two. Now, if I give you an exam, I might give you the, the number so that everybody draws the same diagram. Otherwise, everybody will draw the different random number, right? The diagrams will be different. So let's say first station draws a number three, one, two, and three. These three, it has to wait. The second one draws one, so it waits for one. And the third one, I mean, like basically these are S2, S3, S4. So S2 draws three, S3 draws one, and S4 draws two. So it sets its timers to two. All right. So who will transmit then in this case? S3. And so S3 waits for one unit of time and then it starts transmitting. It says RTS. It sends an RTS. And, um, and it says that, um, it will send for however long, right? And uh, its data happens to, I should have pointed out that the data that it wants to transmit is exactly two units of time. All right. So it will need to send the RTS, get the CTS, <coughs> send the data and send this. So it adds up all of that and puts that in the RTS. Everybody goes away. Yeah. Uh, what says what we using time for? Yeah. Okay, so basically the thing is we need the circuits to turn around and we need basically to start sensing the medium, things like that, right? So so it's very short time and but it is required. I mean you cannot just do instantly because the clocks are not synchronized. I mean, clocks are synchronized, but not to the picosecond. Right? Your question? Right, right. Every frame has an acknowledgement. And so when this station announced it's that it is going to send the data, which is not shown before that, it would have announced that I will be sending the data, which is two units of time followed, I mean, of course, the acknowledgement will follow it. Then the station four receives acknowledgement because this uh, station one, okay, 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 good point. See, the thing is, this is the transmitter. So I'm showing that the station four sent the acknowledgement. I mean, now this is just an assumption that it was the data was going to four. Right? So the sender doesn't send the acknowledgement, the receiver sends the acknowledgement. Any other question so far? All right, so let's see what happens. So it won the lottery, so it, 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 it sends the, it sends the, it sends the data. It first sends the RTS. And now you see it gets the CTS from one which is access point. And therefore, um, it sends the data then. And, um, Send the data and get the acknowledgement. At this point, everybody waits for diffs, and then they continue. Actually, next slide. They at time t is equal to nine. Station three starts transmitting at time and says that I will be busy for eight units of time. Nine at say at time t equal to nine, seventeen, right? So. 17 media becomes free. Okay. And then 20 the disks expire. Now the backup timers are restarted. 
you see the I mean, restarted means not restarted continue and basically so you see the back of timer was there but it was stopped paused so it is unpaused okay so this is still had it is down three but it has finished only two before and um, so it finishes three here this had drawn um, how much is it done? Two. It has done two. And um, so I will have to check whether you know it, it still probably needs one more. But um, since they had three, one, and two, uh, one finished, now the number two will come back. So actually, this station, number four, will start. Whether it will start one later or one, I will double check that one. Okay. So, anyway, so now this one is system. So it sends an RTS and gets the clear CTS basically because nobody else has come in between and so it gets the CTS, it sends his data, gets the acknowledgement and then this guy will come in and will do it unless somebody else in between comes in and then tries something out and so on and so forth because we don't know who else is trying to send, right? So the idea is that, so key thing to remember is that the back of timers are paused. So you don't redraw the number, you just use the, whatever you have not used previous time, you continue with that timer. So in that sense, you get a little bit fairness or priority. Why? Because if you have already waited so long, now you start again fresh number, then you're starting from zero. So your timer is smaller because you've already waited so long. Okay? Yeah. And all these standards are on the same for carrier? Okay, okay, okay. So here we are not talking about. Okay, so this is the this is the key thing. Okay, good point, but that was all physical layer. All right. Here we are talking the data access layer, right? So whatever carriers we are given, everything combined is one. Okay. So suppose we are using OFDM, and I was given this little square, right? And um, and so here's the thing though, like I, let me just say this, no. Basically, in OFDM, those, um, no. So let's, let's not worry about the physical layer. Right now we are just assuming that the physical layer is, is given to us, basically gives us a wire, okay? I mean, gives us a medium, whether it is five carriers or 10 carriers or 20 carriers, it doesn't matter. We just use, we, we just get this, this thing and we give the bits to the physical layer and then later on I will explain that how the frame becomes a bits and how does it go on the wire, right? Right now we just need to decide that at the MAC layer, layer two, when do you start, right? Once you start at this point, then you have to give the packet and there are certain things you have to add to the packet and then you have to send it down and all that. That is more detail which will be coming up and will be different for different um, ABGN and so on and so forth. But right now we are keeping it simple. We are just assuming that there is this medium which is given to us and there is only one medium. So we are not thinking about 15 different um, carriers and things like that. All right, any other question? All right, so, so much about DCF. This is called distributed coordination function, okay? Now, you will not remember any of the numbers, but you will remember the me method, okay? Because this is, I mean, one of the things I'm teaching in this one is that you know, this is the MAC, this is the media access method in BIPI, okay? All right. So, the next thing is some terminology. So, basically, when you have a Wi-Fi network, you have access points. Okay, each access point, actually not each access point, basically each access point belongs to a service set, which we call basic service set, BSS. And there can be many access points and many service sets in any area, right? So this is a red access point, this is a green and blue access point. And um, so each one is a BSS, each one serves as BSS. And each one is connected to something wired and that is called the distribution system. 
access points are connected to the wire on the in the ceiling right um here is an access point right there in this room and there might be one here there is one more here two access points right here in this room right that is not probably okay so 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 you can see there are multiple access point with multiple um, bss and then there are some stations which are ad hoc which means that they don't use access point they can just talk to each other so that is called ad hoc means no infrastructure required right and so there could be an ad hoc network and you can do that try it out in your room when you have two computers how can you connect to each other without going through the you know network you should be able to do that okay every computer allows this one and somehow if you set it up right now this is something that you will have to google it out before you do it because you know every uh, this one is difficult so but if you really need it you can transfer information between the computers without needing an access point so that is ada there is an ada network and then this is basically on the on the distribution network there are some real servers and thing like that okay all right so let's just understand some terminology bsa is what we call a cell or a basic service area each bsa may have several access points so can you give an so and we actually more commonly call these things ssids which is a service set id right do you can you give an example of an ssid that are available in this room hostel to hostel guest hostel encrypted hostel encrypted 2.0 these are all ssids right so those are basically serving a service area service set so basic service set is the set of station where this is an area this is the stations this is the distribution system is the backplane and then extended service area is everything that is connected by a distribution system that can you know like a whole hostel is connected by many of these networks connected together with this one ether not one many ethernets maybe one ethernet even possible so so that is called an extended service set extended service area and extended service set ibbs is that ad hoc network so independent basic service set is the set of computers in the ad hoc mode and the ad hoc networks can co coexist and interoperate with intra infrastructure based networks it is possible for example this could be connected to hostel encrypted and this computer could be connected to that this computer and then it can go through so this is ad hoc and then infrastructure so you can even try that how you can go through that so actually i think um, when you set up the network it says that do you want to allow other computers to access network through this computer and if you say yes i think that will allow this to accept connection from other computers something like that okay so both of them can exist at the same time any question about these sss understand bsa esa all right now we go into frame format so when the packets are sent and by the way the word packet is not a good good word because it, it, by packet you cannot say but basically so we will use a much more definite terminology in the next few slides but generally in the data link we call them frames okay at the ip layer we call them datagrams at the tcp layer we call them i forget whatever i mean so so basically every layer has some arbitrary name before we had some arbitrary name before but iso standardized these terms which will come in a minute but right now frames so frame format so the first 16 bits are frame control then the next 16 bits are duration rid so if it is duration it will be the time that i want to hold the medium remember that every frame had a time in it this is the field then there are four addresses address 1 address 2 address 3 sequence control and address 4 okay and then there is your whatever you want to send information and then crc i will explain each of these field but basically you notice that this is the information that you want to send for that we have to add up all these bits each address is 48 bit long and we have four of them right now what is in the control so the control itself is 16 bit the first two bits are simply the version number 
second two bits are type, subtype, whether it is going to DS or coming from DS, which means going to the distribution system, basically going to the wired network or coming from the wired network. More bit basically says that this is a fragment and retry, that this is a retrial, retransmission, and power management. So, we'll explain later on that this is basically what we are going to do for power <laughs> management and more data means more is coming. WET is the security system that was used before, wireless equivalent privacy, and then the order, uh, strict ordering. So, so basically, let's see. Type is basically whether it is a control packet, management packet, or data packet. This type field. There are three types. You need two bits. What are the control packets? RTS, CTS are control packets. Okay. And uh, the data packets. The management packets are actually we didn't discuss so far. But when you talk about management of networks, then you can ask access point certain things. So there are management packets. Okay. Subtype is association, disassociation, reassociation, probe, authentication, deauthentication, CTS, RTS. Act. So basically, association means I want to join. So that is a join request. Disassociation means I want to get out of this network, disconnect. Reassociation means I want to connect again. Probe is basically is there anybody here? So basically, the way you find these networks is that the computer announces probes, sends out probe networks saying that who is here, right? And the access points can respond. At authentication, basically that, okay, I am such and such, and here's my password. Deauthentication, disconnecting, again, and then CTS, RTS, Agbino. I like subtype, and there are so many subtypes, therefore we need four bits. Okay. Retry the retransmission. Going to power save mode means that I am going to sleep. More buffered error. Basically, this is this may not have any information here. It will be, for example, if I am going to go to sleep, I will tell the access point, look, I am going to go to sleep. Now, if some packets come for me, please, you know, save it. And actually, I just say, I am going to go to sleep for eight hours. Actually, not my eight hours, like eight, eight millisecond maybe. But let's say I'm going to go to sleep for such, such a time. I tell the access point, and then I can go to sleep. Okay? And they will save, yeah. The access point actually store frames? They, they will store the frame, yeah. Now, so, it, so obviously, it cannot be eight hours, because in eight hours, they will be just over flooded. But it could be a few milliseconds. Yeah. Why, why don't I go to sleep? Yeah, you can go to sleep. The thing is, if you have to transmit, then obviously you have to wake up. <laughs> but if you want to receive, then you don't have to be awake all the time. And actually, that we will describe in more detail when you have to be awake. So you go for a certain time, small time. And when you come back, and then suddenly access point tells you that, oh, I have this five packets for you. Then you wake up and then receive the five packets. And then maybe wait a little bit longer and then go to sleep again. So this is how the battery lives actually have improved. Not because the batteries have improved, because we just go to sleep all the time. Okay? All right, power save. More buffer data at access point for station in the power save mode. So more means the access point is sending you some data and says, look, hold on, don't go to sleep. There's more coming in. Okay? And remember, to send all that data, it will have to do that RTS, CTS stuff, you know, I mean, everything. So, um, and WP, WEP is the wireless equivalent privacy, that is the security information in this frame, and th that the ordering is strict. Um, and so, uh, we'll see that ordering thing later on, but let's see. So, duration and connection ID. The first field was duration, or it could be ID. So, they try, yeah, sorry, question, you had a question? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Why is the sequence control between three and four? Why is the sequence control between three and four? I I don't know the reason, but um, um, but um, I don't know the reason actually why why it was put at a particular place. Yeah, yeah. For the subtype, does that apply to each type of the different 
type of data basically? Okay, so the thing is, as you can see, most of this subtype are for control. Yeah. And so the data cannot be actually association, dissociation, dissociation, all that. That is all control. And so if you have a control type, if the first field, two bits says control, then the next field will tell you this. Okay. Um, and um, if it is data, then uh, if the type is data, then I think um, the subtype will be probably much more restricted. Maybe I don't know if there are one or two types of data, but mostly it is one type of data. Now, multicast actually will come up basically by the addresses. So the addresses have a multicast bit in the address. Anybody remembers the Ethernet addresses, 48-bit addresses? So if that address is multicast, that means multicast. If that address is broadcast, that will be broadcast. Okay. So it doesn't have to be explicitly put into the frame other than in the address. All right. So back to this duration versus connection ID. So there is this duration or ID field. If it used as a duration field indicates the time in microsecond, microsecond. So it is absolute time, not the bits or anything like that. So if you are at 55 megabits, 100 megabits, at 1 gigabit, the time is in microseconds. Generally, we have credit for successful transmission of the MAC frame, and that is it. We already talked a lot about duration, so I won't say any more. But in some control frames, it contains the association and the connection ID. So if you are reassociating, for example, you put the connection ID. All right. Sequence control. Sequence control is a four bit fragmentation number of fields. I have this big frame, but I cannot send it all at once. So I fragment it. And so this is the fragment number, you know, basically. And um, so four bit fragment and 12 bit sequence number. Numbers and number frame given the numbers, frames between transmitter and receiver. So let's back space, back space here. The, this field is 16 bit. The 12 bits are for the frame number and the four bits are for fragment number. So when I'm sending you frames, they will be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the first 12 bits. And then if frame number 5 is, is big, then you will have fragment 1, 2, 3, whatever. Right? So some frames may have fragment number, not all frames. But every frame will have a number. And the number basically goes between the receiver and the transmitter pair. So if I'm sending to you, we'll start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm sending to him, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Oop, back. All right, so sequence control is clear and duration is clear, ID is clear. Now the main thing is why four addresses? Yeah. Frame control, what is the order? You mean the left and right? And what do we no, this is the order. This is how the first two bits would be pr protocol type. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, right. So the thing is, strict ordering. Now that we know that every frame is sequence numbered, one, two, three, four, five, you should not be able to receive four before three. One bit simply says strict ordering. Yeah, right. As opposed to... You know, I could send you four and then send you three and then send you two or something like that. You know, but ordering is not strict. You just save. So basically, this has to do with the out of order caching, as we call it. If you get something out of order, then if you basically, there are two things you could do. You could cache it, means you could save it. And then when you get the whole filled up, you're done. You acknowledge the whole thing, right? But here they are saying, you know, mostly it will be strict ordering. In Ethernet, it, it could be out of order caching where you really send in whatever order you can and when you are actually in TCP, when you get up to a certain point, you acknowledge the whole thing. 
right here every frame is acknowledged so frame number three is going to be acknowledged frame number four is going to be acknowledged so um so the ordering you know is um i don't know i mean like ordering doesn't really makes too much difference you know because everything is going to be acknowledged right there but that is what it has to do with it is the sequence number all right the addresses so you see the why there are so many addresses so i want to go from source to destination but i may not be able to go directly you see suppose the source is here and the destination is there right then we'll have to go from source to the access point from the access point to the server right or if the source is here the ex destination is here but i cannot go directly i have to go through the repeater or i have to go through the access point or you know if server is this is the source and this is the destination then that's to go like that so so there are some intermediate points first of all we notice that you know you just don't go from source to destination directly right so there are four cases first case is that you are coming you are not coming from um, you, you are uh, one case one is this one you are going to distribution system no you are coming from distribution system no distribution system is here this black line right you are not going to distribution system not coming from it. in that case the destination address would be the address one this will be the address one source address would be the address two and address three will be bss id this will be what what set your service that you are going through ssid and address 4 will be blank right second case is you are going you are coming from distribution system but not you are you are not going to so this is coming from a server so this is number 2 case right in this case the destination address is destination address the source address now you notice because it is on the wireless the source address will be here which is the server's address will be here and the bss id will be here so bss id is basically saying what access point should is sending it right and so this is the address 2 now that i have described the first two can you think of the third one can somebody think of what is the third one third one is going to distribution system So going to the server. So the first address is the destination address, which is the server's address. Huh? Yeah. And then, next one, yeah. Right. Its first address is the BSS ID. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Coming, going to the distribution system. The destination address is BSS ID. Yeah. The first address is generally the destination. Right. In this case, that is the BSS ID. right and the source address is obviously the second one and um, the destination is server in this case so the server will be here and the fourth is empty now if you are coming from distribution you are going to distribution from distribution so you know number 4 case is shown here and in this case receiver's address is the destination so this repeater's address is the destination address transmitter's address is the source address the destination address is the third one and the source address is the first one now the reason is so let's say the frame is here somewhere here right when the frame is here on the wireless the source is here the destination is here but this is the one that is transmitting the repeater is transmitting so that is the transmitter's address okay and who is receiving on the wireless that is the receiver's address you see so there is a difference between receiver and the destination and the transmitter and the source source could be somebody else the receiver and the destination could be somebody else but the receiver and the transmitter are on the wireless right so we have four addresses so actually i mean you could think of another picture here where there is a server 1 talking to server 2 somehow via the wireless that would be very boring picture so let's say um 
so somewhere basically it is that you know the packet has to go to the wireless but so you yeah actually you could draw up another picture like this you know packet comes from here and then goes through the wireless twice so actually repeater is a better picture so i have shown through the repeater is that this is a wireless repeater you know wireless extender or whatever you buy on the market and so what it does it receives the packet and sends it again in that case it indicates that you know i am the sender i mean i am the transmitter right the original sender is here yeah which is the receiver okay receiver is whoever is receiving on the wireless this packet on this link on this hub okay on every wireless hub there is a transmitter and there is a receiver you understand and the source and the destination are the end points which may not be on this hub Okay, so in that example, the first hub from source to repeater, the receiver would be the repeater, the transmitter would be the source. Yeah. And then the second hub, the transmitter is the repeater, and the destination is the receiver. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I mean, actually, I could, I should probably put two extenders here, two repeaters. Then you will see in middle. Some cases. Yeah. Every, anybody else has any question about this? Why four addresses? And what is the difference between receiver and the and the destination? Yeah. No, no, no. Here the computers are talking. Okay, so the thing is, <coughs> see, so there are two ways to talk. One is to always talk through access point. If a one if source wants to talk to destination, it would source will send it to the access point and access point will send it to destination. That is one mode of operation, okay? And that was actually the original mode of operation. But you don't have to go to the access point. You could source can in some in some cases you are allowed to do directly, and that is actually I'm going to discuss that too you know, when the time comes. So in that case, yes, basically you will not have to go to the access point. So when you say I'm connect, computer is connected to the access point. the answer is yeah you are under the control but connected is not the right word because yeah you are in that service set yeah so you are in the service set means basically you are following all the rules you are putting all the nabs and everything else because if anybody else is sending on the same service set you know you have to listen to them and all that yeah yeah um why do you need the ssid for number one Okay, BSS ID is simply the address of the access point. I know, but what do you need for number one? For number two, and number three makes sense. Okay, so in this case, what is happening? Let's see. In this case, you are going to the distribution system, right? Number three. Ah, for number one. Yeah. Yeah, right. So in this case, um, basically, um, let's see. so this is the so real functions are here real functions are receiver transmitter de destination and source okay so when you apply this functions to this case the receiver is the destination okay case 1 what is the destination this one and um, transmitter is the source second address is the transmitter address right third address is the destination address okay which could be simply this but basically um, in this case it is um, in this case it is telling um, the destination address is access point the destination address is access point so this is going to go there and then it is going to come down like that where it will be in this mode um and um that would not be right then so the thing is now so okay so the question is why in the first case we put the gss id and one answer could be that you know we just want to identify where which access point or which service id it is in in this case we know in this case we know but in this case there is no service set id and that is a problem because then you know how do you know which service set id it is 
being transmitted on. So I cannot give you that argument, but I don't know any more than this. There is a service set ID in each, each of these four, first three, but not in the fourth one. So, um, Address 3 and address 4 are the points. Okay. Uh, see, thing is, let me just say one more time. The four addresses are basically the head serve of these functions. The first address is the receiver address, always. Second address is always the transmitter address. Third address is always the destination, the eventual destination address. And the fourth address is the, the original source address. Right? So now if you apply this to the first case, and if it is just going, you know, first case is just direct half here, one half. So the receiver is destination address. The transmitter is the source address. The eventual destination is destination, right? Same thing. So instead of eventual destination, we put BSSID and the original source, we leave it blank. Now there is choice that we could leave both of these blanks. Right? So the question is, why don't we leave the third field blank? That's the question, right? Yeah. yeah I don't know. Right? I, I will try to find out more. Yeah. But it, does, but it does go through the access point, not like an ad hoc. Yeah. Number one. Number one. So that again makes it look like it's not. Let me think about this, okay? And the answer is I I, I think here's the problem. There are between A, B, G, N and AC. In some of the later ones, they allow this mode. Where you don't have to go to the access point. In some of the original ones, they everything had to go through the access point. So I have to see whether this represents some cases, different cases, and all that, right? So if if you have to go through the access point in every case, then this will be the case, always, basically. Because everything goes, the destination, the receiver address is always BSSID. I mean, you will send it to BSSID and then you tell where it goes and then it will send it with the source address of BSSID and it will send it to where it wants to go. So everything will be two half. Right? So that is the case for some of the original wireless. I B B S S I D, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 but there is also, so there are two cases. So this represents two cases. This also represents the ad hoc mode, but it also represents in the, in BSSID mode, what is it called direct link. Okay, there are two cases that this number four represents. Direct link is where you don't have to go to the access point. And so that means instead of two halves, you go everything one half. Right? This is one of the later ones. Okay, all right. So let's talk about the power management. So basically, the station tells the base station that I am going to be sleeping. We saw that bit there, right? And um, and then then the then the all the packets will be buffered. And then whenever the access point broadcasts that beacon, beacon has many many things, including the list of stations whose packets are buffered. All right. And so when a station wakes up, it, it listens to the beacon. And uh, the beacon doesn't have its name. So then it goes back to sleep again. If the beacon has its name, then it has to tell the stage, tell the, uh, tell the base station that I am awake. Now, please give me my frame, right? So it has to send some kind of control frame to the to the station, I mean, to the access point, and then it will get its frame one by one by one by one by one. 
okay so subscriber student sends a ps poll message to access point which sends one frame more bit in the header more frames and then it says okay i'm ready to receive the next one and so on and so forth a22.11e unscheduled automatic power save this delivery mode so the, now a22.11e which came after abc whatever e change to unscheduled and that is apsd unscheduled automatic power save delivery ss transmits the data are null frame with power saving bit set to zero and so basically you can just go to sleep any time you can just send a zero data with one bit set that i am going to sleep and with a scheduled apsd mode access point will transmit at pre negotiated time schedule no need for polling and so there is two kinds of aps uh, power saves one is scheduled and one is un uh, unscheduled unscheduled is you go to sleep and you tell them and then when you wake up you listen to the beacon other one is that, okay i will sleep every 3 millisecond i will wake up every so it will be generally in the terms of super frame so every fifth super frame i will be awake in that case you don't have to ask the base station whether you have anything every fifth frame it will get super frame you will get it and that's good for voice and video and anything that is repetitive then you could just say that every so many frames i will wake up so you won't believe it that you are watching a video but your station is sleeping you know most of the time <laughs> it just receives a frame and goes to sleep receives a frame goes to sleep receives a frame and goes to sleep okay hybrid apsd mode we are ps and pole for some and schedule for other categories so anyway i mean like the key idea is that you just tell the station that you are going to go to sleep and then the station will tell you when it has frames or you negotiate that okay this every so often i will wake up yeah but you also no no uh, the the access point can prevent you from going to sleep well, i thought you mentioned that on previous slide access point can prevent you well, no no access point can buffer for you and okay. save the packets for you but um okay i mean yeah no 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 prevent, prevention i i don't think prevention is possible because um, basically it is possible that if you sleep a lot you might lose a packet <laughs> because it might run out of buffer the one happens if Oh. Okay, so what will happen is, I mean, this would be crazy. I mean, you could do that, but basically, the access point is saying in the beacon, "I have data for you," and you are saying zero. Sorry, I'm going to sleep. So it will buffer it for you. I mean, the thing is, what will happen is your packets will keep, and it might have some kind of buffering strategy which says that I want to be fair. I mean, I don't want to fill up my whole buffer with your packets, so I will give you one tenth of a buffer, and I will give you one tenth. You know, there are rules for that too, buffer sharing. So after your share of buffer is over, they will throw away your packets, right? I mean, so there is no standard rules for how you share the buffers, or how many buffers you have, right? That is up to the implementation. All right. So that brings us to the end of this part, and. only four key points first thing is that a22.11 when we don't put the word a b c d f g h whatever then that is original 11 and actually original 11 has now become 11 basically that means you know, it probably applies to everybody so 11 uses frequency hopping direct sequence cdma and ofdm okay frequency hopping direct sequence was the original one and then cdma and ofdm were added later on right ofdm came with a and g um and actually fr frequency and direct sequence cdma are not three there are only two frequency hopping cdma and direct sequence cdma right both of them are cdma so rfdm came later on 802.11 has 11 phi 11 a phi 11 b phi 11 g phi so far and then the next lecture we have bigger list it allows both ad hoc and infrastructure mode it has a single fifo queue for everybody going out and it uses sifs pips and diffs and you have to know how to use how how these things are used be able to draw the time diagram and um, and
and and know this table which i will have to go one more time through this one just to be clear that everybody is clear about it yeah. anything else now homework so this is basically the homework is exactly that is that you have to draw that diagram time diagram um okay so this will give you a good practice on that one before the exam reading list um i found these two web pages so and i haven't mentioned this so far but what i have done in every lecture is also put wikipedia links okay believe it or not wikipedia is ahead of the books so some of the things you will not find in the books but they are in wikipedia okay so i find even though i mean like you know one could laugh at it but i find that this is a good place to start if you want to know about anything you go to wikipedia find it out it has the references at the bottom find the references and read it but the main thing is the wikipedia is too short it doesn't give you enough information about anything you know it just gives you five lines or you know, something like that and you might need a whole book so so that is the problem it is it is not enough information but but this is a good place to start so for every lecture what i do is i go through what are the key points that i discussed in that lecture and what does wikipedia say about it so for example if we talked about beacon frame now you could go to the books and read about beacon frame or you could go to wikipedia and read about the beacon frame right so i search wikipedia for all of these things and i put the list here and i haven't mentioned it so far but you are supposed to read all of that okay it's not too much actually this is all very short things over there but you, but this is where you find more details much faster than going to safari books so i mean basically in this case these two put are put on the reading list because i found that these two pages were <coughs> had most of the stuff that i want to talk about so i didn't have to go through search through safari books and then there is wikipedia <coughs> 